my birthday and I've got on my P-Funk mask and I've got on my sunglasses and I've got on a mask on top of a mask because we have to be all masked up as we are all, all you can say other things but all masked up so this is what I wanted to do for my birthday was to be able to have a conversation with uh my homeboy my home slice my home actually home man homeboy uh who we've known each other for a long time and it's always been really 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 cool to spend time with him to uh catch up when we see each other on the road um and just you know when you've known somebody for a long time it's just really and who's really warm when you see them and it's just like you, just, you, you, you haven't been apart. And uh, that is what I, what I feel when I uh, see George every time, you know, when I would see them back in the day, in between day, yesterday, and today. So as a gift to myself in this COVID virus time when we can't be with each other, uh, I asked George, if he would be my birthday present to me today. And because of NJ Pack and their uh, series that they're presenting, they helped make it possible, along with Danny Capellian, Joy Collinborn, Asa Arnold, and Carlin Clinton. So we are here, and now I'd like to bring my birthday present to me that I'm giving to you, or I'm sharing with you, George Clinton. And there he is. <laughs> Almost like magic. He is there. So this is really, really great. This is Yay. Hey. 
hey, 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 Watch out, any cats around. Happy birthday to you. Uh, thank Happy you. birthday. <laughs> thank you. I know. Look, hey, we're still here. Hey, we just getting started. Yes. Corona didn't get us, right? <laughs> no, I put a foot in Corona. <laughs> <laughs> the road didn't get us? Nah, nah, nah. All nah, the... nah, we did, we've, been, we've been through these things before. We know how to duck and dodge. This, this is true, you know, traveling in the South during, in the 60s uh, yep. and doing shows and, and dealing with uh, the racism and not being able to stay in certain places and not being able to eat in certain places and not being able to, you know, even go to the bathroom, so. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we've been through it. We've been through it. We know how to, we know how to dance our way out of our constrictions. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And to still, you know, have a smile on our face, still feel good about, uh, you know, life as much as we can. And even, even you know, the, when, when it's really, when it's really, really horrible, when the horrible things are happening, we're capable of, uh, of not only inspiring ourselves, but trying to inspire others. That's what artists do. Get a song in your heart and you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. You know, so I, you know, having this time just to like be with you and talk about different things that we we've talked about before but i just like to talk about them again and maybe some of the people who are tuning in fine tuning their frequency and finding mm -hmm. us here in the universe uh my, i wanted to ask you because i'm sure you you've probably been asked this like a thousand times but i'm going to ask you again what is funk Oh, funk is anything you need to be to save your life. Funk is do the best you can and then funk it. Once you learn, <laughs> once you once you learn to do that, to do the best you can and then just say funk it. <laughs> Musically, a lifestyle, anything, it all comes together once you know you've done the best you can. And that's same way with group with music. You just get in there and do the best you can and let go. And you know, you heard him say in Star Wars, "Use the Force, Luke." Yes, yeah, yes. You use the funk. Use the funk. Use. I mean, you when you turn it loose and put it in the funk hand, funk is its own reward. <laughs> okay, this is the Church of Funk, I think. That's it's it's something like that. But yes, like the psychology of funk. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Is, is it is it is it a state of being? It's a state of being. I mean, like I say, you do what you do your part, do the best you can, and then it's a state of mind. You let go, and it takes care of itself. I mean, on the okay. on the so, on the on the stage, we just get into a group, and then we just let go, let go everything you think you knew about it. Once you get that, they call some people call it get in the zone. Once yeah, you get in the zone, I don't care if you you dancing, if you singing, if you playing ball. When you get funky with it, <laughs> it you, you just let go and it, it takes care of itself. Yes. You know, and funk, like I said, I do the best I can and, and then I let it go. Hey, it, funk it. Funk it. Yes, funk it. All right. That's going to be my new mantra. Funk <laughs> okay. it. Yes. So the, the other thing I was thinking about too, when I was thinking about like funk, like when... When was the first time you felt the funk? Oh, I think, you know, when I used to watch my mother when she she was, you know, hear a record that she liked. Yeah. And she'd go, oh, my, oh, you know. And and I learned to feel where that point was at when it hit her like that. And, yeah. started, and then I started to realize, okay, it was probably she was listening to B.B. King or Ray Charles, and I realized, oh, that's that good spot in the song. It, it makes you, in, in church, you say amen. Amen, yes, yes. You know yes. you know what I'm saying? It's yes. the same thing, it's, a, it's that same feeling. The spirit. You, you know, yeah, it's an uh, affirmation that 
okay, that was it. This is it. This and, is it. and I felt it like, then I guess I was nine or 10 years old. But yes. by the time I started falling in love with music, it would have been with um, Frankie Lyman. Oh, okay. That was the funk of the 50s, the early funk. It was called doo wop. Doo wop. But yep. it still was it was still funky, you know, they had bass singers, ball, 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 ball. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. funky then. Yeah, yeah. You know, that yeah. was our funk. You know, yeah. like in the nine eighties and nineties, you got spit to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funk of that era. Yes. You know, everybody have their own eras. Now when we got in the seventies, we were doing that whoa hi hey. Yeah, yeah, whoa, yeah. We do we didn't have no lyrics most of the time. I was just talking shit. And you know, and I think and I grew. saw you do that a few times. Huh? And yeah, you see, yeah. <laughs> we do it for hours, just chant the groove, yeah. and that was funky, you know. And James yeah. Brown, James Brown made a big thing. He just said anything he felt like, jump back, kiss myself. It, it don't matter what you say. Yeah. Once you're in that zone, once you feel in the funk, yes, you can say whatever you want to say. Wait, wait. So, so like, so James Brown, right? He. He, his title was Godfather of Soul, but he yeah. really was Godfather of Funk, or are you Godfather of Funk and he was Godfather of Soul? Well, I guess I started preaching funk. I started making sure I wasn't going to stop saying funk because I watched rock and roll. You know, we used to say that in the 50s, and pretty soon rock and roll wasn't ours no more. Well, yes. You know, yes. we move, yes. we move, we we move on out and and just leave it, and somebody else come along and take it, and it's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cool. So I oh, made hey, sure that if, if you put it, phone, if you if you put it down, oh, somebody gonna somebody pick it. it up. Somebody gonna pick it up. You ain't, can't be ain't mad. mad at no, nope. ain't mad at him. But I wasn't gonna let that happen with funk. Okay. I made sure that even when we wasn't on the charts, I'm still gonna be preaching funk. Cause it wasn't it wasn't about a hit record, a hit single. Yes. yes. It was about a hit album. Yes. And a hit career. And when you look at it like that, albums last much longer than singles do. Singles are, you know, it's good to have them because that's where you, you know, you you make your money real quick. Yeah. Yep, but yep. if you got a hit album, you know, take Jimi Hendrix, he only had three albums out. I mean, in studio album. Yes. But those were such good albums. He's still the epitome of rock and roll. Still, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, we, a lot of rock stars, a lot of gospel people did albums, and jazz musicians did albums. Yeah. That's you, you know, you stay around a long time if you do albums, but you have to, you know, you have to deal with the kids because the kids are gonna come along with that with that bubblegum hits, and they go. That's their job. They're supposed to get you get your ass out of here. You know, <laughs> get up, get, get up. But move, I always move go on. back. I go back and watch the kids every now and then, especially if it get on my nerve. If it get on my nerve, I know it's the new thing. Right, exactly. Yes, and it, it, and uh, I think for me, it takes me some time to sort of like really find somebody who is doing it to a certain degree, to a certain level, right? Uh -huh. Because not everybody in the game well, is going well, if they get on your nerve if they get on your yeah. nerve real bad that's yeah. usually they, they're usually doing it pretty good then <laughs> yes that's the that's the best way i can't wait on myself to feel it to know what they're doing to know what i'm listening at i yeah. have to rely on if it's getting on my nerve it means that they're trying to get the old man out of here <laughs> and i'm gonna pay i'm gonna pay close attention if it get on my nerve because yeah. it's usually is the is the next one yes you're right. You know, because like I said, in right. the 50s, in the 50s, we got on our parents' nerves with the bow, 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 bow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understood yeah. that. And we got on, like we was at Motown, we got on their nerve with whoa, ha, hey. <laughs> what are you saying? You ain't no lyrics, you know? But then when we heard the spit the beat, I knew this must be something new. You know, it's got to be the new thing. So yeah. I hung in there with the hip hoppers because that was the new thing. Now, yeah. that's easy. I like that. And I'm waiting yeah. on the next one to get on my nerves. Well, you know, the, yeah, they're, they're out there. Cause they, oh, they're, they're out there. They're, yes, they're out there. They're all over, all over the internet, you know? Yeah. And all, all they need to do is to have it like coalesce at some point and somebody becomes the it, the king of, king of whatever that is. Whatever right? the new one is, yeah. So 
Now, the other thing that I wanted to, uh, you know, to talk about, like going a little bit towards the, you know, how people saw LaBelle, how people saw P-Funk, and at some point Earth, Wind & Fire, and some of the other people during that period as Afrofuturistic, you know, in terms of the, that we were some, you know, we were in the future, we were some of the things that we were talking about, you know, like space and uh, traveling yeah. uh, and a spaceship, which you happen to to bring to the world to to the world stages, right? And oh, wow. so wait, so I know I know a lot about the spaceship. I know a lot about the mothership, and I know, but I don't know whether underneath that, because you know, I know I know art. I know you, George. You be putting stuff out there on the front for people to look at. But you got something under the hood that you want them to catch up to later. So the mothership was not just a silver foil thing that looked like, you know, our idea of a spaceship. I know you had some other like other stuff going on underneath there. Well, let me I'll put it like this. Once we did Chocolate City. You know, I tried to put, you know, us as a people, black people, in places you didn't perceive them to be, you know, in the White House and that whole, and once that worked, once that worked so good, I tried to find the next place you didn't see too many of us. Yes. And I, I was a Star Trek well, freak. I yes. love Star Trek. So I know you didn't see too many of us in outer space except for Aurora. Exactly. Okay. You, you weren't going to be in the future, dude. Uh, no, they 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 didn't plan for us to be in the future, but we I'm gonna be in the future. You gotta be. Yes. So I got me a I got me a spaceship. You remember? I got yeah. you know, your boy Larry Legas. We made the costume yes. for yes. you. He made them for us. Yes. Jules Fisher was doing the, the uh props on Broadway for cats and all the other big Broadway plays. And yes. I told him I wanted something to take me out of this world. I'm on a spaceship. I <laughs> want to be able to drive it like a player. You know, going down Broadway, you know, leaning, you know, yeah. and so they did that, and and that was my intention of you know trying to put us in the future Af Afrofuturism. You know, you saw Sun Ra, yes, and Jimi yeah. Hendrix yeah. was doing it. I don't know if he even said thought of it like that, but yeah. he was out of this world. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. other yes. otherworldly. Yes, you know. So that was my intention, and ever since then, I've tried to stay true to that. You know, we tried to go underwater. Yes. <laughs> you know, try to try to groove so hard that we can raise Atlantis back to the top. We sang right. about the Doguns in in the Planet series, series. You know, series A and B, the Doguns. That was a tribe yes. in Africa. They say they were from that from that star um, from that planet. Yes. So. I try to like put in the what if, you know, I don't say I know nothing or I think I'm from another planet. I do believe I am from another planet, I, I, but that's I, between I, me and I, myself. I, I, I might second that. Oh, okay. Can I, can I get an amen? Yes. Well, yeah, I definitely believe that because I'm, I'm had some incidents, but you know, I keep that personally, but I do like to sing about oh, them. Wait, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now you're talking to me. What incident? Tell me the incident, then I'm going to ask you another question. So, what incident? I have a few incidents as well. So, let's see if well, they you, find. Well, I know you know the story. You know the story of, of Bootsy and myself. We were in Toronto. We just left Detroit, finishing uh, one of the albums, and we went to Toronto. Now, now remember, you have to go through customs, so we wasn't. <laughs> we wasn't. Um, Hyped that we wasn't high, you know, <laughs> even though we was headed, we was going to get high, but we wasn't high yet. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. We was on, we was, I was living in Toronto at the time. We got up there and here's my hand. Light straight out of the sky, looked like a laser. Now he didn't say nothing to me. I didn't say nothing to him. I, I know he saw it because he didn't, wasn't talking. He knew I saw it. So when we got to the spot we saw it, both was looking around. I said, you saw that too, huh? He said, what was it? Uh, I don't know. So we, we left it alone, just 
Okay, it was the light. <laughs> five, five minutes later, we get off the highway, and now we're riding down a country road in the woods. The same light come right down through the trees about a block in front of us on the opposite side of the street that we were on, it hit, right as soon as that hit, it, it hit it on the same side that we were on. Again, and the third time, it hit the car. Right where I was sitting at, on the hood, you can uh, see it, it beat it up, you know, like a thermometer, mercury in a thermometer. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like oil and water had to beat up and roll, and yeah. roll off the car. Now, neither one of us said, anything because it was like bam 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 all the street lights was going out now this is what's weird the street lights were going out the first light we saw was weird because we saw it in daylight this was like 10 o'clock in the morning we saw it in daylight that was the weirdest part about it that we saw it in daylight we never thought about that again for like 10 years we went on to the house the street lights was going out Everything was getting dark. We pull up to my house. My daughter come out, Barbarella. So y'all look like y'all seen the goats. <laughs> Me and we just sit there and say nothing. And she said, give me a hug, I'm going to bed. Now, this supposed to be 10 o'clock in the morning. It didn't occur to us that the street lights going out and she going to bed. That's nighttime. Yeah. We never related that, that time sequence to years later that wait a minute if the, if we got there at 10 o'clock that morning why would the street lights be going out yeah why would she be going to bed but we you know we both knew we saw something we hit the car and and all the street lights and everything was going out the car you know all no cars on the street but us until we got to my house pitch black and we didn't even talk about it that's how we boosted thought i should know about it he expected me to have the answer. And I'm like, I don't know nothing about it. And we couldn't put it on the fact that we might have been high, because I would have quickly said, oh, it was the drugs. Yeah. But we didn't have no drugs. Well, maybe it was like a delayed drug reaction. Well, it could have, all of that possible. <laughs> all, of, all of that's possible. You know, yeah. but, but. Wow. But, but, but then, I mean, and we had just finished the Mothership album. Oh, okay. Okay. So you know, but I'm trying not to that's, get all spooked out about it. But no, 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 no. I definitely believed in it from then on. I started studying a lot of stuff, you know. And um, well, oh, I believe so, it. I'm I'm looking for it any day now because I mean, they seem like the government is getting ready to tell us anything they can to throw us off all this bullshit that's going on. Well, well, we, you know, that there's there's a lot of times. Oh, there's, there's, See, somebody heard us talking. That's the government calling now. Yeah, they they they, they, they beaming there. Checking checking on George. So, <laughs> but, but you know, I mean, that's also like Sun Ra, right? Right. Sun Ra thought he said he was from Saturn, right? Right. That he, that he had been he'd been brought here from Saturn, and that he was going to go back to Saturn and actually create a world for uh, for black people. Right, so I don't know, you know, maybe Sun Ra. Is I'm sure he. I'm sure he was on to something. I'm sure he was on to something. <laughs> but you know, uh, and so that well that but that whole sort of Afrofuturism. Uh, let go away. Stop calling me now at this moment. Um, <laughs> it's probably people call me for my birthday or something. But anyway, uh. um, so. You know, the whole Afrofuturism, speculative fiction thing. I mean, like when you were a kid, I'm sure, did you, you read Superman, Batman, the comics? Did you read like Archie with Jughead? And All of that. Little Lada? All of that. Yeah. I mean, but, but the, 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 um, the sort of like the futuristic ones were the ones that I really loved, right? And, but did, did it, it never seemed strange that Superman, or Batman, or any of them, that they, none of them were black. It never seemed strange to me that they were all white. It never even occurred to me. And yeah. I don't know whether you, did you, did you ever think about it at all? Well, no, not really. I never, it never, I never thought until we got to Star Trek. 
Yes. Once we got to Star Trek, and then I realized, oh, wait a minute. I don't see us in there. They had one girl in there. And then I was wondering maybe the the uh, the, the, the clean hands. Uh, <laughs> they, look, they look like some dudes I might know. <laughs> exactly. The and they had, a, they had some other ones, the Romulans. Oh, yes. The Romulans. Yes. They, yes. They, they had an attitude. They, they would put a foot in your butt every now and then. <laughs> That's true. Okay, all right. Yes. So yeah, we we were probably there, but not really identified. No, right? they, you know, it's the same as everything else. You yeah, know, wasn't going, was, wasn't yeah. going to cop to the fact that we've been here. We, you know, we was here before anybody else. And none of yeah, that yeah. was, you know, that's a known fact. Everybody say the first um, people they found was in Africa. Yes. So it, it makes Africa. sense. All the. Yes. But they, it, been, it was kept, it wasn't in our books. It wasn't in our no, history not books. At all. Not, not Matter of fact, all. it's just now becoming a, a awareness that everybody wants to know and everybody's willing to learn. Yes. You know, not everybody, but a lot of people. Yeah, the majority of the people. I mean, you know, yeah. the, that, that our history books did not reflect the truth or the truth of the uh, evolution of, of America or the evolution of the world. You know, of the it, world, really, the yeah. world. I mean, yes. you didn't, you, we didn't even know Indians was here, except for the cowboy and Indian movies. Exactly, and you know, Tonto, you know, Lone Ranger, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's there's a lot of work to be done just to really correct a lot of what has been uh, omitted in history, and then also to, you know, to give young people or people coming uh, behind us or behind even my, my, my nephew reminded me today that I have great, great nieces and nephews. But so that, you know, for them, you know, who are like uh, just one just turned a year old, you know, for him to be able to look at books and see himself, uh, it's really important. And to feel, you know, that's why it was so important um, uh, that Bozeman and uh, Black Panther for young black kids, young black males to see a superhero that looked like them, right? And yeah. so, so that's all that is really important. That's why I want to ask that question because I was thinking about it, like I, I never even thought that why are all the comic, you know, Betty with Archie and all the, the female uh in the comics, none of them yeah. were of color, but that's what I read. You know, yeah. that, and yeah. you know what's what's really weird is the fact that somebody actually thought about that. Yeah, leaving it I mean, out. I yeah. mean, it wasn't like accidental. Yeah, I mean, you would think that maybe it is accidental. No, but no, that that was a part of the plan. You yes. know, when you know all people, all oh, men are created equal. You wouldn't consider. <laughs> Nope. You weren't equal. No, nope. nope. you were <laughs> you not. Were, and didn't you expect were, you didn't expect you to come and claim it either. Yeah, no, you were not a man. You were not a full human being. Yeah, you know, three quarters. But of, now, now you oh. know. Hey, yep. we got the dance floor now. We we, yes. we we on the dance floor, and and when we get on the dance floor, we don't never want to get off the dance floor. <laughs> well, that's the worry. That's the worry. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can see like. <laughs> Take for instance in the music business. Yes. Once Motown hit the scene, oh my goodness. it was like, damn, they had all top ten, they had seven out of the top ten. Absolutely. And then you look around, here comes Stax and Philadelphia International. Yeah, I can yes. dig it. <laughs> yes. Con and consistently, consistently. Um, um, and, and it's good, good, yes. good, good music. But hey, do what we got to do. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, when you also, I was going to ask you also in relationship to, to that, like, uh, you know, there were no, no books that in terms of, you know, going from the, the comics to more like, you know, fiction books, all the fiction I read pretty much was not written by, in fact, until later, you know, when I was right. in my, my late 20s, early 30s. Yeah, did I discover black writers of fiction like Invisible Man? You know that uh, uh, that particular book, uh, Ellison's writing. You know, at first I didn't I didn't get it, 
uh, Rom wow. Romare Bearden, uh, the painter, and uh, Ralph Ellison, the, the, the writer, the musician, the painter, the sculptor. Uh, the, the idea that an artist is not just, you know, a lot of people right. look at you and look at your uh, musical history and think that that is, that is all you are. You know, that that is not that that isn't amazing, but, you know, that the Renaissance man that uh, we were looking at in Romare Burden and look and uh, Ralph Ellison, you know, people who went from, you know, Baldwin from from writing to painting, mm -hmm. sculpture to, you know, so I just wanted to talk with you about that and how that, you know, you said Dolly was a great influence and I, I, I was one of my great influences as well. But I wanted to hear more about what you felt after watching that but film. I saw a part of, part of that that I just saw, it looked like some Miles, looked like one of Miles' paintings too, Miles Davis. He was one of the first ones that I realized that as an artist, a musician, it, it's possible to, to be created in all kind of directions. Once and now it makes a lot of sense to me now because it's it's just creativity is creativity. It's just what you have to work with, and um, and it's an expression. And once you uh, let go and start doing it, it actually you have your own thing. So uh, I'm not surprised that a lot of musicians or a lot of painters or sculptors, a lot you know a lot of um, artists becomes a painters. It, it makes sense. And you know, um, you, you experience, especially you experience the world all around the world. You get a chance to see all different variations of things. So it opens your head up to do your know, reproductions of what you've seen, whether you know it like whether you think of it like that or not. It's still in your head. It's yes. still there. And if you're a creative person, it, it, it can come out lots of ways, especially if you. You lock down like this pandemic thing, lock down with nothing else to do. Yes. Yes. I really, I bought every canvas they have in this little town. And when they <laughs> run out of canvases, I start painting birdhouses. Yes, wait, wait, you have to show, let us see one of your birdhouses. We're gonna, we're also gonna look at a video of your studio, your, uh, where, you, where you work as well. But let us see one of your birdhouses first. Okay. You have one there? Yeah, wait, she gonna give me one of the birdhouses. Okay. All right. Yeah, you know it was on uh, Anderson Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper. He was on tonight. Oh, tonight. And he he was. Just, it's on. It's online now. I just oh, watched it few just for you. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I have to catch I'll, it. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Hey, here she come. Here's a bird. Okay. I'll see it. <laughs> oh, cool. That's great. Wow. Very cool. Are you doing what kind? What are you using to to paint? Like, are you using spray paint or uh, spray paint, acrylic, acrylic, spray paint, all kind. Do, Anything do you, I can get my hands on. Okay. Do Do you use oil paint at all? Oh, I got oil. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah, I find oil is just. I don't like it that much. It just. It's. It, you have to be patient. I think. Right? Yeah, you have to. We have to wait for it to dry. I, huh. I'll be up. I'll be all over it. I do it a little bit at a time, not. Yes. But uh, yeah. So, you know, I was like I said, I, uh, Anderson Cooper. He was on the night, and another yes. thing, uh, you know, the, the day is John Lennon's birthday too. Yes. I, I just did a thing with them about his birthday, and I told him that a lot of them is on here now watching you. I told him oh, it was your yes. birthday. Huh? Yes, you you did something for John's birthday. Yeah, with the with the John Lennon bus, you know, the school yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, yes. and uh, we was talking about yourself and him, and um, I was surprised. Y'all born. I mean, y'all got the same birthday. Same birthday, and, and so does Sean, his son. Oh no, kidding! Yeah, we all have the same birthday. Oh wow, that's that's real deep. You got some yeah. good company. Yes, <laughs> very good company. He's a he's a good artist too. Yes, he is. Sean's excellent. You know, mm -hmm. I. It's, it's so funny because uh -huh. I live I live uh, three streets kind of away from where John and Yoko lived. Oh yeah, John was born, so I spent a lot of time with with them uh, over over time, and uh, being 
Upper West Side being New Yorkers, uh, it was really, oh, what? Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, my producer was just talking to me. Sorry about that, George. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was so, I was interrupted by my producer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm only kidding, I'm kidding. That was Asa, she came to help me. Um, but yeah, you know, we, it's the Upper West Side. There's, there was, you know, Ashman and Simpson. Uh, yeah, I know. There. You know, right? I know the crew, uh, I know the area. You know the area, I'm sure you do. Um, so, but that's, that's, and John also started uh, painting, drawing more than Yeah, painting. that's what I'm saying. John, I remember him and Yoko, they, they books, <laughs> they arts, they called it artsy fartsy. Artsy fartsy, <laughs> exactly. But, but, you know, also, you know, when I think, what I was thinking about with the uh, Miles is that during the 70s or even the 60s, 70s, 60s, 70s, and into the 80s, album covers were really, like, people really put a lot of time and effort and thought yeah. and creativity into album covers to have their style, to, you know, to say what was inside you know, what was on the vinyl, what was, and, and it's, it got lost with the uh, condensing and going down to CDs and going well, down. That, that's, that's what I miss, I miss most because we, 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 um, we paid a lot of attention to the album covers. I mean, that was, that was part of our music, a part of the yeah. whole story. You know, the Funkadelic album, Cosmic yeah. Slop, that, that was part of our story. And then when we start doing the Mothership Connection and, uh, um, uh, motor booty affair, yes. sir nose, and all those characters. Those were our black heroes. You know, the, the yes. Overton Lord. Like I said, he's a phenomenal artist. He's and amazing. So we we specialized in the the covers. Help tell the story of the whole genre of funk. You know, because yeah, we didn't want just to be a, a singer group of singers. We wanted to be a thing. We called it. Parlor Funkadelic meant thang. thang. It, was a, thang. it was a thang. It was, <laughs> you know, you could do all kinds of entertainment and all kinds of creativity. And, you know, the art scene came along. So the costumes that we wore, like, like yourselves, yes. was artsy-fartsy. I mean, that, that was a whole thing of, sometimes it wasn't nothing but a diaper, but when we <laughs> yeah. got ready to get glitter, we got really glitter. Hey, you know, I don't know how many people were going to think of like, okay, my costume is going to be a diaper. You yeah, know? It's yeah, like, it's going to be. A, I mean, it, only like George. Now you know, like only a black fan was going to do that. Oh yeah, but well, you know, but we 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 worked in barbershops. shops. We made people cool, so we know what cool was. We yes. we had tailor made suits in grade school. We we knew how to we knew how to dress. We knew how to you know the we call it bagging. We knew yeah. how to bag. You know we had sharp suits. I mean as it, teenagers. So by the time we got to Motown and everything was glitter, it, it wasn't nowhere else to go. It looked like it was it wasn't as hippies with the clothes we wore in school. So when the hippies started wearing jeans and the patches on them and holes in them. Right, right, right. Oh, I know how to be funky. You mean funk is going to be it? <laughs> so we just threw the suits away. We couldn't keep the ties together. We couldn't keep them pressed anyway. So Correct. funk came in handy. <laughs> we, you take a Holiday Inn towel with Holiday Inn written on it and put it on and you was decked out. <laughs> yes. You know, and so once that, once that worked, we started going to the Masquerade, I mean, you know, masquerade shops. Yes, or, yeah, yes, yes. Any, uh, yes. we start wearing any, and the sillier, the better. <laughs> exactly. You know, so and like, then when I tell you, when hair, when when the play hair came out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We were already dressing like that. You know, and, and when we realized, oh, I look, they look like us. We really went crazy then, and then by the time we got the mothership. You know, we got a big budget from the record company. It was yeah. time to go back glitter, but I wasn't going to go back to no regular suit. We had to get Larry Legaspi to make those ermine tails and 
yeah. everything else. Yes. We, we, had, we had to stop because, you know, the animal rights people didn't play that. <laughs> so we had to get fake fur, but it still was the best of the fake fur. Yes, yes, exactly. But so speaking of like going, you know, into the world, coming from a place where you didn't, uh, your history was not really recorded. And a lot of the things that were uh, considered valuable, whether they were art, music, uh, dance, theater, film, was not something that came out of the black uh, diaspora or the, you know, your, your community, your, your hometown, your ghetto, your, wherever you came from. But when you would when you went to Europe for the first time, you know what what was that like for you? Oh man, you know. But when we went over there, I think it was um, sixty nine. You know, and it was right at the 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 at the height of the whole hippie movement. You know, so we thought we knew what was going on. You know, we was down in the village on West Fourth Street. We was. <laughs> You know, we had we 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 knew what the haberdashery was like. Now, yeah. But once we got over there, they were doing it with such pride. I yes. mean, it was like they go to church like that. They was, <laughs> I mean, that was their regular thing on Canopy Street. You know, we start yeah, home, Carnaby. and then we realized we really had this, a lot of catching up to do. Yes. You know. So, but but, um, but what did but what did it feel like? You know. Like being a young black man in Europe, uh, did you just go to London or did you go to France and Italy? We, and Spain? No, we, yeah, we went to all of went to all of the places, but we stayed like two weeks in London and Birmingham and Manchester and all of the, the northern part of London, and we had a chance to see all the different styles. We went to France. And that's, this was before we got the mothership now. We yeah, were still yeah, psych psychedelic. Yeah, yeah. We, we were supposed to play at the Albert Hall, but Frank Zappa had just played there and they weren't yeah. gonna let no more rock and roll in there after he left. So we ended up playing at the Lyceum. Oh, the Lyceum, yes. You know, so it was like, okay, this all the rock and roll stars, you know, the Led Zeppelin guys was there, David Bowie was there, all of the people that we, Yes. And seen uh, you know in the magazines yes. was around and Funkadelic, you know we were just getting psychedelic you know the um free your mind your ass will follow they thought yes. we were the weirdest things in the world and yes. we were over there with Arthur Brown oh yes he, did he set his hair on fire he he, he set the <laughs> airport on fire <laughs> <laughs> he was that was his thing. He was like, he would set like his hair hell's on Hell's fire. fire. Hell's, hell's I bring fire. you hell's fire. Yeah, exactly. And the the two of us, we toured and we had so much fun. Great. So, you so know, we saw him play. years later and, and I saw he could say, do you remember this chap? Do you remember <laughs> But George, so like, okay, going to, like going to London, like in Scotland and, uh, Ireland and Wales, you know, you it, it's good because you know the, it was English speaking. But going to France or Spain or Portugal or uh, even going further, you know, going to Japan or to other countries where you know you you didn't speak their language, and kind of back then, not everybody in the country in countries spoke as much English as they do now. How did you how did you feel just as a like a person, like here I am trying to order something to eat in a restaurant and I can't say what that is. Well, I mean, that never, that never bothered me too much because at that time we were hippies. You, you, yes. you really didn't have no taste buds anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't, I've never even thought of that. You know, you know, like a, um, you know, like you said, London. They, they spoke English, so it was easy. Yes. But France, I don't even remember what we did there. <laughs> <laughs> like they say, if you remember, at it, right? Like if you I'll remember, you wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Remember, I, I tell you what, remember in it was the France? I did your hair over there. And, uh, yes, you did, did my hair. That's why yeah. I'm looking like I look today. <laughs> yeah, you, I'm, you I'm not like I saw that, life. <laughs> I saw that picture uh, in the magazine not too long ago. Yes. yes. But that wasn't the first time. It was no, <laughs> that, was, that was a redo. That the was a redo. Time, the first time was back in the early days, you know? Yeah, I mean, y'all were still bluebells then. Bluebells, exactly. But, you know, I, I was just interested in how, you know, you felt being in another country that was so different from where you had come from. You know, as, as a child where I grew up, as you know, it, it you didn't have that, those opportunities like a lot of young people have today that they, you know, a lot of young uh, black people, uh, people you know, get, the, get to travel more than we did. So we were being exposed to something and people were being exposed to us who had never really uh, in, been involved with black people in terms of like, you know, being on television in Europe or, so it was, I was just interested in, in how that hit you. Well, you know, it was so much, you know, um, black music over there. You know, France had a lot of the jazz musicians and Jimi Hendrix and all of them had, you know, Bob Marley and, you know, all. there was so much of that. I felt like we were speaking hippie. It wasn't no language. It wasn't no English or French or German. It was <laughs> you speaking hippie and pretty much you could communicate that because there was only a few things that you needed to talk about. <laughs> this is true. That's very true. Uh, and we know what they are. Yeah. We, we, won't, we won't say tonight. We ain't got to go through that now. I mean, that's, a whole, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, so wait, now I want to I show, so show your, uh, the video of your art studio your, where, you, where you do your painting. So Katie, can you can you get that up so that we can so people can see that? All right. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's the like that. Yeah. Do you, do you do you always paint to music? Pretty much so. Pretty much. That that gives you a groove. It's, it's like dancing on the canvas. <laughs> you know, yeah. you get you get into a, a, a stroke thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. But that you know, I was I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about uh, you know. When you, when you are, when you sort of were going on the road, right? And I was thinking about Barbarella, and how many children do you have? Oh man, I'm the father of our country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, okay, that's good, that's good. I, I, I'll leave that alone. So, but did, but did. did, did, did did I want to ask this question because I don't know whether pe many people ask you this question, but when you became a father, did that change you? And becoming a grandfather, has that changed you or do you change them? Oh, I think in both ways, you know, because at first my, my oldest child, they, they grew up with me. I was still a teenager when I had them. I was still in the barbershop doing hair when I had them. But by the time they got grown up, they got kids, you know, my grandkids, 
I had a chance to like actually raise them, my grandkids, but my kids grew up with me. You know, they were like my, my, my brothers and sisters, you know, for the most part, you know, yes. until they, the ones that are still around, they still like my brothers, they got kids of their own, the grandkids of their own. So I got <laughs> great, great grandkids. Yeah. But um, it changed, you definitely changed once you get older, you know, for real older and, and understand what you, what their little, their little life, life form that you have to help and everything. The other yeah. ones think they know as much as you do, so ain't too much you're going to be able to tell them. This is you true. Know? Yes. And sometimes, sometimes they know more. Well, the, the grandkids, I count on them to tell me what's going on with, with this new digital age. I yes. count on them, even the music is, yes. is, is in their core. They, they come hardwired to the computer. Yes. I mean, I'm talking about like seven and eight years old. They, they know that. Yeah. You know, so I, I count on them for that one. And I don't have no problem with listening to them, you know, to get information. Because yes, they, they don't want to be bothered with you if you ain't going to let them do it. This is true. So, what, but, but what, was there a moment like, you know, where you went, oh, I'm a father now? No, I, it was more, I'm a grandfather now. I never <laughs> got, I never even got, I, I had a clue when I was a father. I mean, they was like my, my, my brother and sister. I took care of, I knew I had to do that. I took care of the family, yes. you know, but I was on the road. I was a musician and they were right there with me, traveling with me and everything. So yes, I mean, the responsibility was there right from the get go. Yes. I wasn't, no way I could get around that. My father had instilled that in us you know, from the very beginning, you have to work and all of that. So it, it just came natural. It got scary once, like I said, when it was the grandkids, because yeah. now I actually wasn't out there in my mind half the time. And I had, I had to see exactly what I had to do. And then you started being scared that you, you got to take care of this and you got to make sure you make money and support everything. That's... I'm, I'm lucky that it just came natural to me the first time around. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, well, it's probably you and a lot of other people. You yeah, know. Oh, yeah. You know, because it's, it's like, a, it's a very scary thing to like this this other little person here, you know. Oh my God. Have to deal with, right? I mean, I worry more about grandkids and great grandkids for, because I know where their parents, you know, just having to do it. So I, it, I'll be, <laughs> be feeling sorry for them. So I'll jump in there in a minute. Yes. So the, the you know, when, so getting, getting to that, just in terms of like being able to um, pass on some of the, you know, the experiences, your experience, the knowledge, and especially the, the, the vast amount of people that you just worked with. I mean, just in terms of, you know, the, your your influence or the P-Funk influence on the Red Hot Chili Peppers is just, you know, like all over what they do. And just thousands of other artists, whether they were sampling and like stealing early, <laughs> but now I guess they, they pay for what they take. But, you know, all of that uh, in terms of your, like your, I you know, what you leave behind, your legacy of, um, you know, the experience. It's something that you really, I don't think you can really, I know, I know your book, Hey, George, was it Yo George Ain't Funkin' Kind of Hard on You? What it, what's the title? Brother, brothers B, You're Like George. B. Ain't that funkin' kind of hard on you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, and I know you put a lot in, in into the book, but you know, I, I don't know whether you can capture, you know, who, what, you know, George Clinton in a, in a book. Well, right? I t I'll tell you what, my, myself, I use Smokey Robinson was my hero. Okay. And if you know him, you know his personality. He's still, 
So my working with other musicians came really easy because I wanted to be like him with the Temptations and all the people that he worked with and that. Uh, that was my dream. Yes. And as far as when people were sampling this stuff, most of the musicians paid for the samples. My problem was always with the record companies and the publishers. That's a yeah. whole that's a whole nother thing. That's, a whole, yeah. that's another episode. That's another episode. I'm just okay. coming to terms with that <laughs> now. I'm yes. just now, you know, since the, wow. the, the copyright recaptures is coming back. Right. The, right. the right. legacy belongs to my heirs. So I'm yes. more I'm more um hardcore when it comes to that. I get a little pissed off when when it's messed up now because it's not yep. for me, it's for my grandkids and my kids. Yes. But, but I never had a problem with working with the artists to this day. Like I just did a record with Public Enemy, you know, and that to me is like the joy of being in the business, being able to work with all the different musicians, no matter what style they do. You know, I felt good to be able to work with the Kendrick Lamar in this, uh, yeah. I'm, I'll be 80 years old yeah, my next yeah. birthday. So but it, I'll be, but, I'll, but I, you, what you bring, what you bring to that is something they can't, they can't know because they haven't been where you've been, right? Most, most of them is a little different with Kendrick. He was one, what you call old soul. Okay, okay. He know more than he was supposed to know at his age. <laughs> <laughs> so his, his was a, his was really interesting to work with. I mean, for for that age, I mean, he done skipped a couple of generations, okay. and he's talking to me like he's my age, and I, I'm listening, knowing that he's talking the right shit. I mean, yeah, he yeah. was correct. Yeah. Yes, you, you know. Yeah. So, but you always you, there's always something to learn, no matter where they come from or how they do it. You know, if it's if it's the new thing, there's still something to learn, but. Learning to be able to get along with people, I think I was able to show them that that the real valuable lesson is to learn to be able to deal with people, get along with people no matter what. And I find the best side of anybody that I'm working with, I look for the best part. The part that I don't like, I don't even deal with, I pretend I don't see it. Yes, you, you know, just funk it. They funk it. You know, okay. and it pretty much you can get around, you know, I ain't, you know, step on my toes because I ain't expecting nothing. I know what I want. And if I got that part, we cool. Yes. Yes. So, so when, when, I mean, I, I would think that it's similar in like working with Prince, you know, because, you know, and I think when you're working with, with other artists who are, um, you know, they have, they kind of like they 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 know what they want and what they want to do, but they also are are like hungry for what it is that you can bring to what they do, right? Yeah, that with Prince that was evident there because he was one of those ones that pr really knew what he was doing. He knew what style he wanted to do, like Stevie Wonder. He could yeah, do pretty exactly. much could do much, pretty much all of it, and he knew what he, what he wanted to do. But he also knew what he wanted from, say, from the funk. Yes. And it was funny because it cracks me up. And I'm like, you already got that. But it was the personality <laughs> part of it, of dealing with other people and being able to hang out with people, a crowd. And, and he thought I was weird because I could just walk off stage and walk out into the audience and hang with folks. And then he tried, and they, they swam him, and he couldn't get out of it. I said, but you can't yes. stop. You can't stand still now. If you're going to do that, you can say hi, shake hands, but keep moving. Because if you stop, they're going to take over. And exactly. He, he wanted to learn how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, you know, part of the, the um, what I really value, and, uh, and because we travel a lot of the same roads, came around, you know, around the same time, you know, touring with uh you know with james brown or otis redding or wilson pickett or uh mm -hmm. sam cook or you know and playing the apollo theaters doing uh, all the you know the royal theater the howard theater all those theaters where you were in there all day long doing shows and watching you know people who were at their the 
the top of their game. Mm -hmm. uh, and not just one, but maybe five, six people. You know, <laughs> you got the Drifters, you got James Brown, you've got, you know, I don't know, uh, Lil Anthony and the Imperials, uh, <laughs> Marvin Gaye, you know, all these different people on the same show, and they're like, it. And everybody is trying to out it everybody else yep. on the show, you know, because that's what you needed to do. Uh, from costume to singing to dancing to you know your persona, uh, we watched the the Tammy show a bit of it the other night with um, James Brown, you know, and the whole please 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 thing and the cape and Danny and the band and going off and coming back and not gone and passing out and you know <laughs> it's like if you if you I think if you uh, and I'm really really glad that I had the opportunity of having that experience where we would tour with James Brown and you could watch him every night and you could watch the uh, Bobby, uh, the, the guy, the backing singers uh, and dancers basically in the band. You could, you, if you couldn't learn then, you weren't going to learn. Ain't no hope. No, Ain't no, no hope. hope. I mean, I used, I used to go to the, the Apollo and stay there all day long, from the first show in the morning to the last show at night, and then on the weekends. Yes. So I'm, I pretty much knew everybody's routine, what song they was gonna sing. So yes. in, by the time we got there, we knew everybody's thing, you know, everybody's, but you still had something to learn, because by that time we was, actually had threw away all of the things that we had learned, and we had to go to the funkit side of town which means we was there to tear the place up. And the closest one to us was that was the Osley Brothers. Oh Remember? my God, yes, yes. Twist and Shout, a lot of people know the Osley Brothers from their love songs. Yes. But if you, if you knew the Osley Brothers in the early 60s, you know that they wrecked house. When they, when they was on stage, they told, play, they told you know, things down. And that was the type of people that we was trying to be like, Yes, the Isleys for <laughs> forever. <laughs> forever. I mean, every every style that they tried to do, yes. they did it well. Yes. I mean, you know, Jimmy cut his teeth there, right? Yeah. You listen to, you see Ernie Isley today. Um, you know, it, it's really, in, in some ways, um, I... There's a bit of sadness for some of the young people today because they don't get that. They don't get to experience that, you know? They but will. They, yeah. I mean, they will. It goes around in circles. It goes around in circles. They, this generation might miss it, but the next generation will find it and think they found something brand new. And next thing, yeah. I mean, look at, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Which one? What's his name? Uh, is he uh funk uh, funk you up funk you up oh funk yeah uh yes from hawaii yeah. yeah i mean he brings back all of those notions that you're talking about oh, yeah yeah exactly same you know, and, it, and it's, yeah. i mean even prince really prince yes. reminded me of, of james brown you know and all all those different dancers and singers exactly know? No, it's true. I, I, I just think the, the amount of uh, places and time that we had to... Oh, yeah. You know, the sh amount of shows that we did in a year, the amount of places we had to play, and, you know, some places they didn't even have a microphone, right? Yeah, right. Oh, those were the fun. They sang on the floor with no stage, and people was... Yeah. This... <laughs> no, they, I don't think they, they ever got the chance to experience that singing in the gym at the yeah. schools. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, back in the sock hop days, you know, but it's also, yeah. the, but the, the amount of shows that yeah. we, we got to do or had to do um, yeah. is, you know, it's just, I think what it does is it, that thing called muscle memory that happens yeah. when you like playing tennis, being a tennis player, you just hit so many balls, forehands, forehand, forehand, 
that it just becomes, it's just the body, it's just Yeah, connected. your body, your body know more about it than you do. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's- Bruno that's, Mars is the guy I was talking about, Bruno yes, Mars. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah but, the, but that's the, um, <clears throat> you know, the thing that, and when I say I feel a little sad for some of the, the younger people today, they, they don't have that kind of proving ground that a lot of people over, say, from the 60s to 70s and even to 80s were able to have. I think from the 90s on, it became, you know, the, the amount of places to play, the touring, how people toured became totally different, became the yeah. big, you know, it's my tour. I'm good. It's my world tour. It's just going to be me. And, yeah. you know, maybe one person at the front of the stage, they can have this, the edge of the stage. I will have the whole stage. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, well, I, styles, yeah. styles do that to you, it, and I'm sure yeah. it's gonna be some. It's gonna be some new ones after this pandemic thing is over. Oh, it's gonna absolutely. change again. Absolutely, and you're gonna be at the forefront, right? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm. They ain't gonna get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there with you. You know, because I got. Okay. Uh, I moved on to using like these gloves to control my voice and stuff, right? They're called Me Mew gloves. So I use them to, uh, I should have turned them on and plugged them in to show you. But I use them to control my voice and you can use them to control your video, your, your lights. Okay. And so it's a whole thing I can put, you know, my, I can control the reverb on my voice. I can control the music. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you I see, you see what time it is. It's definitely futuristic already, okay? Oh, yeah. We, we, <laughs> We're there. We're going there, and uh, you know, and work. You know, the other thing I wanted to uh, to you know talk about more with your with your painting. I know you had an art exhibition in Florida, right? Right. We just said, yeah. Yes. Just got a just got an art manager just recently. Yeah. Okay. All right. You got uh, yourself so, an art manager. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, the people, you know, they're, they're, I'm sure that there's lots of people who just want, you know, can't wait to, you yeah. know, have I, I want, I want to give a shout out to Vivian Chu. You oh, know, yeah. Vivian Scott, you know, she's the one that has been helping me for years. I mean, signed me up to labels and now yeah. she just hooked me up with the art. Yes. That's a people oh, fan know. for you. Also, Vivian, I, I love Vivian. I love Ray. They're just two of my favorite people. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know uh, Nancy Lewis. Oh, Nancy Lewis. Yes, yeah, she died. I'm. I'm sorry to tell I'm, you that. Yeah. I was so hurt when I heard that. You know, she was very. She. She turned me on to that northern soul. Yes. She was. I remember in the '60s, early '60s, when she said they was getting ready to buy all these old R&B records in Detroit and take them back to London and, and sell them in Birmingham. 20 years later, they was calling it Northern Soul. Yeah. And I remember that so well, you know, and, it, and I, this, took her, I took her to Detroit and she bought all the records and her best friend was Ina, yes. your lawyer and my lawyer. Yes. <laughs> and I think, you know? I, I think Ina's on here tonight. I think she, she's checking Somebody out. Said, <laughs> Hi, Ina, shout but out. We can, we can open it up for a little Q and A. Some people might have some questions. Let's see, you know, maybe Ina's on there. She might have a question for you. Let me see. We are, where can people buy the birdhouses and the art? I just not, like I said, I just got the manager. She gonna have us, we, that'll be set up pretty in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so it'll be on your George website. Clinton, GeorgeClintonArt.org. Oh, that's too straight. It's just going to be just like that. Well, until she get in and tell us what to do, I'm not. I wasn't moving. I was just painting. I'm. I said, I'm not going to do like I did with the music. I'm going to make sure I get it right before I jump out there. <laughs> All right. I thought you were going to have like a name, like you know, the cosmic um, slop of the art with the funk up in. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll do that eventually. But I want to. <laughs> All right. So, so they can look at your website. They can check there for where they can purchase all anything, right. anything George Clinton, right? Right, right. And so, are you doing any music while you're 
in COVID got, lockdown? Got an album that's getting ready to come out called Reaching for Litness. Oh. And um, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting. I don't want to say, got some, some um, different people on there, but I don't want to say just okay, yet. Okay. No, no, but that's good. But it's, it's a, it, believe me, it's a hell of an album. Okay, Reaching for Litness. Right. All right, I got a question here that somebody uh, is asking. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm also, also getting yeah. ready to do a record with Rakim. Oh, are you? Yes, you know, he's another one of my heroes and like Smokey Rakim. is, when it comes to hip hop, he was like the first one that I'd say, okay, I got yeah. to go back to school. I got to get my... <laughs> I got to get some rehearsal knowledge. in there. Get some knowledge. Okay, somebody, uh, let's see, Corey Washington said, I met you in New York at B.B. King's and gave you a copy of my Jimi Hendrix book. And my question is about J Eddie Hazel. Did he meet Jimi Hendrix? What kind of discussions did you two have about Jimi? I know what? you saw Jimi play with Curtis Knight in New Jersey before he became famous. When we meet again, I want to give you my latest Jimmy book, Jimi Hendrix, Black Legacy. Thanks, and P.S., I met you, no, okay, he met me as well. Yeah, so but the question no, is- Eddie, Eddie, Eddie didn't meet Jimmy, but I bought um, all of Jimmy's albums. When we first went on the road with Testified in 67, I bought all of Jimmy's albums and gave them to Eddie. And he that's what he got his chops together for so Maggie Brain and all the rest of it, like three years, two years later, three years later. Yes. Yeah, you know that I, oh, we have more. We have, okay, we have a, you, this is question time, George. Uh, let's see. Love, really? Love handcuffs? What inspired, oh, love handcuffs. What inspired you to write this powerful song? Which one? Handcuffs. Oh, it, it was it was some we met some girls. We, no, 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 for real, we met some girls. We met some girls from Chicago. They was uh, friends of Shaka's. They was all come. They just came to um, L.A. and they was on the wild. And we met them. And they whole dialogue. We gonna put some handcuffs on these guys. You know, we gonna put the handcuffs. We gonna, and they, you know, they was right out of college. They were young girls, and they 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 was on the wild. So I, I got a lot of lyrics from, from them on that. Matter of fact, I think she got she got writer's credit on that. <laughs> Great. Okay. No, it wasn't. If we wasn't into handcuffs, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! I had handcuffs. Yeah, but I'm I'm, I'm too scared for that. I ain't letting nobody handcuff me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna mark that one down, George. Okay. <laughs> That's a demerit. If you're not, okay. If you, if you, okay, that's a demerit. Okay, okay, so here's the other one uh, from uh, Jesse Krakow, who I know. Mr. Clinton, out of the millions of songs that have that songs that have sampled your music, do you have a favorite one? Mm. Mm. <laughs> not not a favorite song, but I I, I have favorite people producers that use the song. You know, like the way they used the uh, samples with Public Enemy, Hank Shockley and the crew. I liked it the way they used the songs to make a new track because they actually had arrangements. They didn't use a loop and loop it over. They had a little bit of this song, a little bit of that. They actually made a what they call mashups now. Yes. They made they made real arrangements. You could actually chart it out with on paper the way they did the arrangement. So I liked it, but all of them did. You know, I mean, you have to like what Humpty them did to yeah. do the Humpty Hump. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. They they did the loops really good. Okay, so that's so Jesse. Let's see what the other one is. Oh, happy birthday! Thank you. He's magic. Uh, you're magic, George. Somebody just said you're magic. So say so what? Somebody just said that you are magic. Oh, okay. I'll go oh, for that. Okay. So. Somebody's saying, please tell us the story of how the song and video Baby Go Go came about. All right, I'll talk about that. Uh, let me see. Oh, I was going to play that video. Let me see if I can play it. 
That's your song, right? Yes, yeah, song. You're you're in the video. And yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, right. that's for Let's you. See if I can. Yes, that's for me. But what's that question? Vivian Chu commented on Facebook. I am. Oh, I am honored. Uh, Vivian. She says she's honored. So All I right. <laughs> she. <laughs> George says. People. Yeah. P-Funk. Here we go. Let me see if I can play Baby Go-Go and go screen share. Oh, the host has to let me screen share so I can play this. Okay. And then we can, should we ask, she's should we do it. some more she's questions? Got she's got it. Yeah? Okay. You're going to let me screen share? Yep. There is that it. Here we go. And it's playing. <laughs> I'll play all of it though. to get to the part where you were dancing okay <laughs> i'm going to stop sharing that and come back to you oh. <laughs> well <laughs> those were the days <laughs> those were the days that was fun that was a fun fun shoot so that how that came about is uh i was doing a record doing an album um with dan hartman remember dan yep and uh and I wanted to uh, do a song with Prince. And so I, I'd met Prince years before when he was, before he was known as Prince. And I was playing the club in, uh, I think it was called Fifth Avenue or something in Minneapolis. Yeah. And yeah. Prince came to the show and he was all like, all shy, you know, didn't want to, <laughs> couldn't talk. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and somebody said, you know, he was like in the corner right? and somebody said, uh, Prince wants to speak to you. Prince want to talk to you. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it was really funny. So we talked, you know, and he was like, oh, I really love LaBelle, LaBelle, you know, LaBelle, 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 LaBelle. Right. And I didn't see him for a while after that. And I was wearing like uh, stockings and uh, like these stocking holder things and stuff. And that, so he, he took that idea and put it on vanity. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I was wearing. And then when I was, you know, we saw each other again and we did some shows together uh, when he then came out as, you know, 1999, everything, he blew up. Um, and so we, 
kept saying, let's do something again, let's do something together. And he was like a really big LaBelle fan. And I said, I was making this record and I needed a song and I wanted to do something with him. And he, uh, he had written Baby Go-Go. And then I wanted to do something specifically because there was a sound that I had in my head and that sound was you, right? That was you and Mavis. Those were the two voices that I was hearing in my head on that song. And I called you and said, you know, George, <laughs> it's your home girl. <laughs> Please come and do this recording with me. And you said yes. And you came up to Dan's up in Connecticut. And, yep. uh, and Mavis came with her, with her sister, uh, Cleotha. And yep. ate, a lot of, ate a lot of donuts, ate a lot of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we got uh. it. P.M. Stevens played a uh, bass on it. Um, and it was it was great. We, it was a great time. So that that's how that that song came came about. And thank you, George, for doing that. And and for coming and doing the video. Yeah, but like you said, Prince was definitely in LaBelle's. He, he had me talking. Tell me some stories. Tell me some <laughs> stories. <laughs> he loves and, stories. You know, and Mavis was like, Mavis is like one of oh, my favorite yeah. artists, period. Uh, period. Montana. Mon <laughs> Montana. <laughs> Mon you, my Montana. <laughs> oh my God. You know, I mean, we, we spent so much time with each other's over the years in, in the theaters and uh, on the road with the staple singers and everybody, Isaac Hayes, Donny Hathaway, all these amazing artists that we got to just like hear all the time and hear them as they were making music. They weren't, yeah. a lot of it was just was live. So it wasn't listening to the record. It was listening to them doing the music and, you know, Nina Simone performing with her. And, it's just the the nuance of what they would do on a given night, and if you toured with them, it was never the same. Now those days, those days on the tour bus with all the different acts. I mean, I mean that's one thing. Mavis and I used to be back in the back of the bus telling stories, and Prince Prince would say, "I never met any of those. I never <laughs> met any of those." Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and that that's something, too, you know, just in terms of Prince. I mean, you know, he he went and brought into his music, you know, people like you, people like Mavis, people like um, the horn player from James, uh, Maceo, you know. Yeah. He brought, because there are certain things that, for instance, recording to tape, right? Yeah you're not going to get that sound you know cuz that that recording was it that was that sound going on to oxidized material yeah, and, and yeah. That Ana was, analog yes. analog yeah you know, it, that warm sound they got digital version they got a picture of the <laughs> of the machine but they don't have the machine <laughs> that's true that's I mean, weird. but you, you, you have to give it to time moves on and yes, evolve, yes. but some yes. things you really do miss. Yes. The warmth, the warmth of uh, analog is definitely well, something to be reckoned with. Well, and also, also the, you know, making a record took a long time because a lot of times the machines didn't work, right? Mm -hmm. So you had to wait for the machine to be fixed. Uh, and especially a lot of the things when we're using the early synthesizers, like right. the, you know the um, the the large sort of Fairlight, you know that thing could oh my like god, as large was a, a as large as a refrigerator. That was a, that was a, that was a studio in the, in the in the machine. Exactly, and 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 one person knew how to work it, knew how to play it. So did that you, did, person, you, did did you ever play with Thomas Doby? Yes. I mean, he he could do, he could use that machine like it was a regular drum machine. Exactly. He had more more things in that drum in that machine. Anybody's studio you wanted to sound like, he could make it sound like their studio. Yes, yes, but it, it's also you know, but 
but that in terms of having that the patience in a way sometimes to make a record because you know getting capturing the sound capturing uh that moment that you know you might like play the song sometimes you get lucky you play it one time and that's it but sometimes you had to play it and you know we didn't we didn't sample and fly any vocals in you had to sing that thing you know we did songs 10 minutes for 10 <laughs> minutes and you had to sing all 10 minutes of it yes. on t on 10 different tracks <laughs> yes exactly so it, it it's it's in, it, what what i'm getting at is that there's certain things um as much as I love technology, and I really love technology, and I and I'm I'm in it, but there's certain things that you cannot, in the real world, like no. you cannot uh, capture, and that is I think the joy of people seeing you and the band live, um, and being there and and cap here getting it in their ear, right. Right. It's a very different, different thing. I, I remember seeing you in London. I went to see you in the band. It was like about a hundred of y'all. Like, I don't know how many of y'all was on that stage. It was like, you had like three drummers. I don't know right. what it was. It was like a whole bunch of people. And the audience was like, it was packed. People were, I forget, it was like the, at the Academy or something like that. Yeah. But, you know, when... When the, and I waited to see you afterwards. Uh, and when the, when the audience left, it was like a sea of plastic cups. They had <laughs> drank more beer than they right. could. I could have floated out of there. You know, it was just like I had to walk through a sea of plastic cups. <laughs> but they had had, it was a great night. It was a great night. And uh, I think, and then I saw you again at, um, uh, uh, what is it, Lincoln Center? When you, when Sly, when you were being, uh, you would, they were, you were being honored, and Sly was there. Tell oh me yeah, right. Bit, tell me a little bit about your relationship with Sly. Oh well, yeah, you know that he was my hero. He is my hero for real. And uh, we had so much fun, but we got in so much trouble most of the time. <laughs> I mean, people just see us together; they knew we were up to no oh. good. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, even the police would just ride by and say, just for being together, we're going to lock y'all up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but we, we had so much fun, you know, with like two kids, grown men, like two kids, you know, just doing what we're doing right now, talk, uh, telling yeah. all the stories and all the lies that we've been through. And um, I mean, wow. And I was lucky enough to get, not the last time, but the album for the last one I put out, I actually got him to do stuff on the album for yes. Shake the Gate. Yes. And uh, that was, that was the, I felt proud of myself because it's hard to pin him down. <laughs> he's not satisfied with his own work, so he's really not satisfied with doing stuff he with other people. He hasn't been satisfied with his own work since, since the 70s. Right. I mean, he was, he was always, he worked. Yes. He'd, he'd do the same song a hundred times. Yeah. Now he got versions of the song that sound better than most people's songs, but yes. not for him. Yes, exactly. Now no. he was hard, he's hard to beat, but he's still, he's a fun dude. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I, I he's an, an amazing artist and uh, the, the family stand, that whole period was, uh, you know, that just the, the first album was like just yeah. that you know, with, with great, great songs and the lyrics, you know, and that's another thing, the lyrics that, uh, that you and uh, P-Funk P create and put out there and Bootsy and, and Bernie's contribution to this bass synthesizer is just unparalleled, really. He's, he's, he's one of the, the all time great musicians, but you yeah. know, Bernie, Bernie was, there's no comparison. I mean, since he was 14 years old, he was doing that. You know, yeah. when the synthesizers came out, he could do it, do that on a far organ 
for the yeah. most part. What most people needed a synthesizer to do. Bernie could do that stuff as a kid on a, like I said, on far fees of Oregon. Yes. And he was unbelievable. But you put him along with Gary Scheider. Yeah. And, you know, the whole Plainfield crew, Glenn Goins and yep. Boogie. You, you get, all of them went to school together, went to church together. They hung out in the barbershop with me. Yep. You know, and they grew up to be just what they were as kids. We all knew they was going to be as kids. Yes. No, that, that's great. And, that, and I think that also contributes to, you know, the, the funkiness. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. You know, that, that knowing each other, uh, not sort of being put together as a group, that you are, you know, you, you're from the, you're cut from the same cloth in a way, right? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, yeah. It, yeah, that was it. They all, like I said, they all went to grade school together. You know, yeah. when, I, when I met them, they, you know, Billy Bates was nine years old and Eddie was 13. I mean, they were all, Bernie was 14. They all was like that, and I was 20. Yes. You know, so I, all of them, they grew up and learned their craft. You know, they got Motown. I took them to Motown. They met everybody out there, so they had a chance to do that. And by the time we got a hit record, rock, psychedelic rock and roll was happening. They was in it right at, from the beginning. Yes. So and when Boots and them came along, we just changed it to the, Mixing the JBs with Motown with Jimi Hendrix, and you had what we call P funk. P funk, indeed. Yes. So wait, so you were before you came after the Bluebells. Yeah, I, I, I watched y'all. I watched y'all. I watched y'all in the Bobettes. The Bobettes, yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. All okay. right. Yes. Okay. You remember that? Show? I'm, yes, I'm I remember the Bobettes, indeed. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that yeah, we came. We came. We got our record after. But, um, but, yeah, so my but, heart to the junk man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. we didn't know. We didn't know what we were singing about. You know. I didn't know what you were singing about either. <laughs> that's that's Billie Holiday. She was singing about junk. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. We did not know. We were singing like, I saw my heart to the junk man now. So, uh, you know, it's like. Oh, that was, that, that, oh, that was a Billie Holiday song? Yes. Okay, that, okay, school me. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I got schooled later in life. I was like, huh? <laughs> what? No wonder, oh my no, wonder God. The, no wonder the older people liked us. Who right? produced that record? That was Bobby Martin and uh, oh, Bobby Martin. Oh my God! And I think Richie Rome. Okay, Richie Rome. Did you know yeah. Richie Barrett? Richie, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He did. He did the Chantels and yes, the Chantels. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was like we, one of our kind of rival groups. I mean, the Chantels were like amazing. They were. They. They. They were. They were my heart in in they with the '58. Amazing. Yes. yes. Was it, was it maybe? Maybe, yes, Lord. Yeah, maybe, yep. And the Shirelles, you know, I mean, just- Yep, them too. Yeah, so wait, I'm, they're telling me I've got to start wrapping up. So I want to show this that I have. Oh, she got P-Funk power. <laughs> I do. And I'm sure ah. other, people, other people are going to be wanting to have them because I'm going to show them to them. Oh, Maybe show them the pins. I want that. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah, you got the collection. <laughs> I got the collection. Wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave them in my will to one of my nieces and nephews. <laughs> it's very valuable possession. And Thanks, Nona. <laughs> Happy birthday, girl. Yeah, and I got my peep on other mask. Okay. And I got this is P-Funk mask. Oh, boy. You got the whole collection. I got the whole collection over here. I got, and, and the maggot, maggot brain I got, too. But I have to ask you these last questions. You got to get this one. You got to get this jacket. Oh, oh, I do. That's the One Nation. Oh, uh, okay. 
Sakai. Is, is that on the website? Sakai. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I like the t-shirt because it'll go with my mask. So I have to get a t-shirt to go with my mask. Okay, wait. I've got, I have these questions that I want to ask you. And this is just a stream of consciousness. Where did they go? Where did my questions go? Oh, here they are. So I'm going to say a word and you say a word or what you think. All right. Oh, I'm going to wow. say... My first word is Black Lives Matter. About time. White supremacist. Oh, I'm going to say, oh shit. Bootsy. <laughs> oh, Bubba. <laughs> Whoa, Bubba. Uh, Rock. Wow, how long want to go there? <laughs> Enroll. <laughs> uh, hair. I ain't got none. Okay. Uh, you. You too. Me. Me too. <laughs> okay. Trump. Doo doo. Doo doo. Okay. Uh, Obama. My man. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, the afterlife. I'll just be getting started. And L G L G B T Q. Friend of mine. I think that's all of them, the ones I wanted to just throw at you. So, yeah, this has been a fantastic, fabulous birthday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy birthday, girl. Yes, and I'm going to, I'm going to, we have to finish Got That Doo-Doo. Let's, right? let's get it. Let's do it. Yeah. So I've got, I've, I'll make sure that I get it and we'll, we'll get it done. Okay. All right. Take Thank care, you, baby. Car Where's Carlin? She's hiding over there. She's Carlin. hiding. Is she going <laughs> to stick her head in there and say hi? <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for helping make this happen. And thank you to Katie and to Sima and to Danny. Uh, they're in the background there somewhere uh, from NJ Pack. And I don't know whether this will be on their website or. Uh, for people to actually go and see another time. I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> people who wanted to know more about your art, I'm going to let them just let them know again that they can go to your website. You got your art manager. She's going to charge them a lot of money. Right? Okay. Right. So, <laughs> so he has an art manager, and that's who, that's who you need to talk to. And what else do I need to tell them about? There's lots of things. You need to go and buy your mask. Make sure you get masks because it helps support the P-Funk band while we're in this COVID time. And uh, the money goes to them and helps them to survive through this really, really difficult time. And musicians, uh, you know, the, our life on the road, some, some of us make money, some of us don't make money. And we all have to share what we have during this time. Also want to let you to say that everybody on here, it is so important that we vote. Vote. Right? Yes. That's, yes. So uh, all, all the other stuff is important, but voting down in your local community, state, city, uh, national, it's important because that's what's going to make the change. Um, Yes, you can watch this on on the N, NJ Pack website. Um, when can they watch? Anytime soon? Yes, yes, anytime soon. And Asa, my uh, producer, come over here. Get your face on the camera. If you want somebody to do some social media stuff, George, George, this is Asa. Hi, Uncle George. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. So you hooked up now. You got an email. Carlin has it. 
and that's that's it i was going to have my cake here but you know i'm going to have a virtual funky cake okay because it tastes real good mm, mm, mm. okay go lightly <laughs> <laughs> okay i love you love you I too love you. buddy take care all right okay bye <laughs>